Okay, it's time for some mixed media. That means we're gonna be using oxide inks, gloss sprays, glitter gel, and who knows what else. Um, this is gonna be really fun. Let's make some cards. All right, everybody, let's start talking about what um, kinds of supplies you need to do some of this mixed media that we're gonna play with. The first thing you want is an all-purpose mat. And we sell these and they run around, looks like it's about $21.95-ish with the ship and then shipping and tax. It is sticky on one side. That's the side that says close to my heart. And so that's the side that's gonna go down. I know that's a little counterintuitive. You'd think that they would keep the brand on the top, but, but they don't. The other side though, is the side that you're gonna work on. And that's the side that's going to um, resist uh, adhesive it will keep your uh, it'll use it'll be kind of be used as a palette for your inks and your sprays and everything like that you can heat emboss on it and um, nothing sticks to it except I do find it's a little bit harder to get these gloss sprays off of them another thing you're gonna need is some paper and you can use cardstock I really recommend watercolor paper because it's made for this. It's made for uh, working with all of this mixed media um, products. So um, you're gonna find everything goes on smoother, it mixes better, it doesn't muddy as much. Um, so I really recommend you get some watercolor paper. We do sell that too. Then you're of course gonna need your oxide inks. I have mine all in a little case here. These are what we're gonna play with mostly today. And um, I think we have 14 different colors blast to use just an absolute blast there's so many things you can do with these including just jet direct stamping i also like to play with our gloss sprays we're going to have a little fun with those today and then this is really one of my favorite things are these glitter gels because they have things like stars and hearts in them and it just looks so cool on a card it, it i don't even i can't even explain it but it, it just the the uh it just adds an extra um swirl of glitter and and these little shapes that almost look like from outer space it's pretty cool we're gonna play with those and you'll see now you want to have some things that'll add a little bit of texture and backgrounds um, we have stencils they come three to a pack and there's i think four different packs so really a lot of stencils to play with I hope that um, this is showing up okay and not too shadowy there. I see a little bit of shadows there. But if you don't have stencils, you can make your own. We have stencil paper where you can just take your Cricut and cut out your own stencils. And these are made out of like a plastic. The, the uh, stencil paper is like a plastic, so it will last a long, long time. Another thing you can do for texture is use your paper towels because don't all of our paper towels, you know, have some kind of texture on them now. Just be careful not to buy the ones that have um, the uh, brand name and print it into the paper towel. Another thing you can use to add texture is like a crimping, a crimper. Remember we used to use these a lot in scrapbooking? We'll play with that a little bit today. Lots of household items kind of uh, uh, that you may have laying around. Um, can be used. I have this old magic mesh that I've had for probably 25 years. You could use um, some tools from your kitchen, um, like uh, um, plastic wrap, um, plastic baggies, um, foil would work. If you have a, a clean one of those scrubbers that you use to scrub your um, uh, pans and pots and pans and stuff like that, if it's if it's not been used before, that can make cool textures. A washi tape, you can uh, put this down on your paper before you dip it into the, the paint and, and have cool lines on your paper. Another thing you can use for texture is um, uh, the uh, different thin cuts that we have. You know, you can use the thin cut itself and, and ink through that, or you can cut it out onto some cardstock and use that as a little template to ink through. Same with these background ones like this. So I could cut this all out um, of some cardstock and then use that as a stencil, or I could actually use this as long as I keep it clean afterwards. So, so many cool things you can do with so many products you already have in your house. Uh, another thing that I like to use, and this is not, not a must at all, but um, I use an iron. It, um, sometimes if my paper gets a little too curly, cause you know, you're putting liquids onto the paper and so you wanna make sure that uh, um, it's flat. You know, I kind of like it to be flat when I attach it. And so um, I just bought this 
teeny tiny iron on Amazon. It didn't cost too much, but that's not necessarily something you absolutely have, but most of us have an old iron. I mean, who irons anymore, right? So you might as well pull that old iron out of the closet and use that for this. Last thing is um, um, I have some painter's tape because at some points I want my project not to move and so I can tack it down. So those are all the things I think I'm gonna be using today plus maybe some deli paper. I haven't decided if I'm gonna play with that today but that's something you can uh, buy really cheap on Amazon is some deli paper. So let's have some fun. So I forgot just a couple things that I want to tell you about that I, are also supplies. It's really handy to have some wipes. If you don't have wipes, you can also use your chamois. Um, either way, those are going to clean off your mat after you're done with each session. I'm not sure if I mentioned the spray bottle of water because these are oxide inks, so you need water to make them oxide. You're going to need paper towels not only for texture, but also to wipe down uh, your mat after you've wiped it off with a wet cloth. You want to wipe it down and dry it off. You're going to need your trimmer to cut the papers, and you're going to need um, a tub if you're using stencils because... Um, you don't want to leave the paint, paint or ink on your stencils to dry or your stencils will get all icky. So I put a tub of water, of warm soapy water next to me and just drop those stencils in it. And then when I'm all done, I swish it off and rinse them off and we're good to go. All right, let's play with just the Drostrex oxides for a moment. And I've got some, um, some smaller pieces of paper. Normally, I like to, to uh, put my paper into full sheets for a 12 by 12 layout or five and a half by four and a quarter for a card. But I have some scraps left over from cutting those cards. So we'll just play with these just a little bit. Now, one thing about Distress Oxides is you can absolutely stamp with them just regular when you're using your stamps. They tend to sit on top of the paper because they're half um, uh, pigment ink and half regular dye ink, they stay wet a little bit longer. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you let them dry a little bit longer, but the advantage to that is you can also dry emboss with them, or wet emboss with them. So pour the embossing powder on, uh, knock it off, and then heat emboss with that. And, uh, and you know, it's so it's kind of like the best of both worlds on this, but uh, we're not going to do uh, any embossing today, although I will show you some cards that have some on that. Um, pick your favorite colors and, and then you get to play with it, right? So um, one thing you can do is go direct to your paper. So I'm just going to put some ink on there. Love to use a lighter color in there. So let me put some yellow. This is showing on the camera okay. And don't worry, it doesn't have to completely cover it because you're gonna play with it. And I love this abandoned coral. So that was peacock feathers, mustard seed, and here's abandoned coral. And just for fun, let's put one more car, one more color on it. So I've got antique linen here. I'm gonna do that. So you can absolutely just go um, like that. You can just go direct to paper. That's gonna make a very cute card background already. I can just see putting this onto a card base, stamping here in the yellow part, the sentiment, and then putting some flowers or something on it. But you can also play with it. So you get your bottle of water and get that top part wet there and just let it dribble down and see what kind of looks that it does. Get the other one a little bit wet down here. See if I can get that coral to uh, drip to. You can turn it many ways. And then when it starts looking brown, which sometimes it does, I just grab my paper towels. Now here's a place where you can try um, to do a little of that texture on it. So I'm going to just roll that paper towel over it. So not only is it gonna pick up some of those drips, but it might make some cool looks. Let's see. I see it did. It did do some, can you see those little dots and stuff in there? That's all from the paper towel texture. Now the other cool thing about Distress Oxides is you can use them over and over again. So you can go on top of them with another color. So let's do a little purple. This is Seedless Preserves. And it doesn't tend to um, muddy much. So uh, it's pretty, unless you're really working at it, you don't have to worry about the colors um, necessarily getting all gross, right? So you can just go right over on top and you're gonna see with this purple here that it sits on top of the other colors. It didn't mix in, see? So that is one of the advantages of this. 
So I'm gonna um, uh, move on. See my battery's getting low. I'm gonna charge my battery and I'll be right back. All right, so back to this piece. I've got um, the, the uh, uh, seedless preserves on here. I can leave it just like this because it looks really cool. But, and it has dried pretty much now. But if I want to, nice thing about oxide inks is they can kind of re-wet. So I can play with this and let some of this color go over the top. See, again, it's not doing a lot of muddying because the uh, it tends to sit, they tend to sit on top of each other. Now, um, instead of using a paper towel this time, I'm gonna take my um, little uh, heat, craft heater, which I also forgot to mention on the uh, supply list, but this is something handy to have. Not necessary though, but for purposes of doing the demo, I don't want you to have to wait too long to for these to dry. So I can play with them when, on this. Remember when you used to blow with a straw to uh, put your temper paints going everywhere? You can do that with this too, because they will move as you blow dry them. <laughs> blow dry. As you craft heater them, as you heat them, probably the best way. And I'm gonna dab a little bit since there's quite a bit of excess there. Get that off. And now we're gonna have a background that we can either play with or leave as is. I love the way it looks already. I think that I'm gonna leave this one as is and then I will show you a different look for the next one. See how it has curled up. I can heat it back down a little bit with a craft heater, but that's where an old iron comes in handy. So let's move on to our next one. Since I have my uh, peacock feathers ink out, let's just do a card in a different way. This time I'm going to actually tack the card down because I'm going to use a stencil over it and I don't want the card to move. So you know that old trick of putting the tape on the back, right? So I'm going to stick that down this way. And this is a non-stick mat, so we'll see how it <laughs> stays down, but it should. All right, put that down there. I'm going to use this uh, stencil this time. And I'm going to go ahead and use that uh, peacock feathers again. And I think I'm going to tap my stencil down too, just so that won't move. Put it up in the corner. There we go. All right. That should help. And then go ahead and, I, again, I kind of like to go off to the side a little bit before I'm starting. And put some color on there. And that's so much fun. These stencils are awesome. Check that out. And I think I may not even do the whole thing because you don't have to go the whole way. Maybe I'll leave a spot there for a sentiment. Let's do the reveal. Very, very pretty. Just like that, these oxide inks look great. Now, pull that tape off. You can still do some water if you want to. It just starts to do these cool little spots on it that I really like and it just changes them. So it's more a little more subtle and not so direct on there. So I'm going to leave that one like that. I'm not gonna add any color on that. We'll let that dry. And um, it's handy also if you wanna dry something faster. Let's just use this. I'm not sure if I've already showed you this. I've made several videos and I'm only gonna show you certain ones. But if you do want them to dry a little faster, you can use your craft heater. That also helps with the oxidization. And I think that's going to make an awesome card. I like that I left part of it white. So I'll set that aside to finish drying. And then let's play a little bit more with some of these cards. Another thing you can do is wet the background first and then add your inks. So let's do a little of this peacock feathers. See how that makes lots of bubbles with the water on there already? 
This is Seedless Preserves. Oh, it's so much fun playing with color. I love it. And I've got a little bit of ink left from whatever I had on there before, too, so that's probably going to come on. You can also spray your card first with some water. So let's just see. Again, you never know what you're going to get. I'm going to grab a paper towel just to kind of put that down because it's pretty wet. Let's see what it looks like. Ooh, now that's a completely different look than I've had before. So I'm not even gonna do anything else with that because I love the, uh, just looking at it, I can see how cool the cards are gonna be for that one. So let's leave that one like that. But let's do the same thing and we'll play. And then we'll put some more of that water down. This is something I could do all day long, I swear. I could just keep playing over and over again and just making backgrounds. And for the last two or three days, I've taken backgrounds from a former um, uh, uh, demo that I did and um, changed them all into cards. And so I'm going to be showing you those at the end. I need a little more water here. Um, and I had so, 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 so much fun. Get that down there. And again, spray a little bit on my card. And this time I will do a little bit different. I'm going to just pick up different parts of it. And let's see what we get this time. All right, now this time we will put a little more water and let it, ooh, changes so fast. Let it drip a, a tiny bit. A little more here. All right, now let's get my magic mesh I have somewhere. I got lost. Uh, I just thrown everything everywhere here. Oh, not sure where it is. Oh, I've totally lost it now. Let me see if I've got one in here. Nope, so forget the magic mesh. Let's go with a, another uh, stencil since I don't have that handy. And put that down like that. I dry it just a touch. And then let's pull up, let's do a little of this green here, because I already used a little bit of green. And just in certain spots, I'm gonna do this. See, I, when, I go, when I go direct, it's a little too dark for me. Just gonna go do a little bit of green in certain spots on this. Ooh, there's a couple different stencils on this, so this is really gonna have a cool look. And we'll find my magic mesh for the next card and see what that looks like now. All right, it's still wet. I'm gonna take my, my uh, paper towel across it. I'll add some more texture in it. And now look, awesome. So awesome. Oh, wish I could put my hands on that magic mesh quickly for you. Ah, there it is, finally. All right, so now what's cool about Magic Mesh is it already kind of sticky on one on both sides, actually. So now let's take one of those colors that I use at Seedless Preserves. I'm going to change this out. This is uh, really nice how these foam, t foam uh, tools that you can change to a different color. So I actually take and put the these on Velcro underneath. So I should have just grabbed it off of that, but I have plenty of these. So let's take a, more, a little bit more of this. And I'm gonna go through holding this down closely. Eh, see, I still, it's better to go off the side first. It just gets too dark otherwise. And just take that across so that I get that really cool magic mesh look. See? Oh, this is just awesome. This is just awesome. And I just see already, this is gonna make a great card. And I am gonna show you these uh, different pieces, not every one, depending on how many I get done, but I'm gonna show you how these get turned into cards. I just want to show you the um, glitter gels that look like this and what we can do with them. So I've got a couple of the uh, different um, uh, card backs that we've, uh, done so far and I'm just going to put a little glitter gel on them. We have um, four different kinds So this one now you can do this with a palette knife and I have palette knives With me 
I just grabbed one. Um, there's different sizes and stuff. We sell these, um, but honestly, uh, uh, wipey and my finger are pretty much my, <laughs> my thing. So uh, I hopefully you can see in this one, it's got um, little circles in it. So all I do is I just take one of the uh, cards and I like to kind of make a trail of the um, stars. It just feels, I don't know, I, it's like, uh, I, I just feel like it's it, it's a, like a, a little um, a galaxy, <laughs> you know, uh, when I'm doing it. I just feel like I'm putting on um, little uh, uh, galaxies with all these, you know, uh, it looks like a galaxy, like Milky Way or something like that. So I just spread it on wherever I want. You don't want to do it all over the whole thing, but... Um, and it just, it dries so cool. And you're gonna see some examples. And I will turn this one into to a card too, hopefully. But um, really, really cool. So then you just need a wipey, clean your finger, and then try another one. So let's see what else we have. I think, this. so this, uh, this one has stars in it. This one um, has stars in it. So this, um, let me see if I can find the name of it. I don't see the name of it on here, but um, I will be, be putting links to these. So, oh, maybe it's on there. Oh, Nebula, Nebula. So this is Nebula. And the other one with the gold stars is uh, hard to solar something, solar flare. And then this one is asteroid and moon dust. So we're gonna be using um, some uh, Nebula here because this one has stars in it and I like that. So I don't want to lose a single one, so I'm going to wipe those all off. And then um, I'm just going to use some of them on this one. And it, it doesn't take too long to dry, but it's going to take a little while. So you're going to set it aside after you put it on there. Let's get some stars in there and just go wherever you want. <laughs> but it is so cool. I just love it. And, you, and it just dries beautifully. You're gonna love it. Because it really adds something to the cards and backgrounds. So I'm just gonna put that much on there. We'll do one more. And let's do that gold. My fingers are a mess. Mixed media. This is what it's always gonna look like when you're <laughs> playing with these. So it takes you back to your kindergarten days. So I think on this, I'm gonna just put it across that purple. Because I've got three sections of purple there. So I'm just gonna wipe it across there. And then you guys will see these when they are completed cards, if I can get them all done. I did so many this weekend. So I may just show you some of those because I use this on quite a few of those too. So I'm just gonna go right across this purple section here and we'll let those dry. So I wanted you to see that I was able to get all of my oxide sprays, gloss sprays, off of my mat. So it just took a little scrubbing. However, I am going to spray them in a box because we're gonna work with those for just a minute or two here. For one thing, they look great over other color. So I'm going to grab the cheddar. You always want to shake it. Now Tim Holt says shake it side to side and then you don't get the liquid up in the cap. I think that's a good idea. If you do want to shake it up and down, put a, a little cloth over it when you're shaking it because it will sometimes um, get up into that cap. So let me just do a little spray here. Woo! Went off to the side for a bit. There we go, so really cool look. Whenever you're using oxide sprays, you want to wipe them immediately after you're done. Yes, they can get clogged. All of mine were um, actually clogged today because I hadn't been taking care of them like this, making sure that I cl clean that little um, sprayer right there off. But um, they all came back to life, just took a little cleaning. So that's one thing you can do. You can also use the oxide sprays to totally um, go on your um, your card base um, as it's really a card front not a card base um, as the the whole 
of it. Instead of using it with oxide sprays or something, you can just do it. Now these have a nice little sheen to them, which is cool. So I'll put a little bit of the blue up there. This is turquoise. And again, I'm gonna wipe it. And let's do a little of this darker blue. This is ocean. Try to take it side to side. There's a little ball in there that helps uh, get that going. And then just squirt a little bit of that. And it does make a beautiful little shine. That's why they call it gloss. <laughs> and then one more, let's do, maybe I'm gonna do this uh, fuchsia and then I will do some dark blue over it all. And a little bit of fuchsia at the bottom. Now this was just unclogged a minute ago. <laughs> Might have to switch out to another color. Well, my goodness. So sometimes when that happens, I just make sure that the sprayer and everything is clean. This one was working. Yep, we got it stuck. So I'll deal with that in a minute. Let's try another color instead. Let's do a little of this cheddar. And hopefully this one will work. Oh, there we go. All right, so a little cheddar down at the bottom. Clean it. Whoop. And over the whole thing, I'm just gonna do a little of this um, night. I don't hope this sprayer works. I just tested them all. There we go. Not too much. Just a touch. There we go. Wipe it off. Now I can let that one dry because it's a cool look just like that. But let's take these same colors and try something different. Let's put a little water on it first because these also react with water. They don't need a ton. A few sprays and we'll go back and we'll start again with a little bit of the turquoise at the top and see how that looks with the water. And we'll spray some water on top of it too. Then the uh, ocean. Keep it clean. And the cheddar. We don't have a ton of colors of these, but I have a feeling because they sold so well and sold out several times, matter of fact, during 2020, that we're gonna get some new colors. Our brand new core catalog pops up September 1st. I'm gonna get a good preview of it in July. I cannot wait. So let's spray a little more water here. And we'll see how that looks when we're all done. So here is with water, more subtle it looks like. And here's a little more stark without water. So those are two cool things you can do with the gloss sprays. Okay, let's look at the results. Here is one of the cards that I did with those um, Oxide Inca backgrounds that we made. Here's another, remember this one with a stencil? And I like the white space that I left there. Here I cut out the um, uh, some of the beautiful backgrounds and turned them into hearts. This one, I cut up a background slid it apart just a tiny bit, just to put some white in there like that. Isn't that adorable? I really like this one. This was made with those two that we did the uh, um, oxide sprays, the uh, gloss sprays. I cut one up to make the hearts and left the other as the background. And then here's that other one that we made with a little bit of the magic mesh on there and just put some flowers. And then let me show you some that I took from the last time I was um, doing an, uh, an oxide uh, ink demo. I decided to put together all my backgrounds from that last one. This one, I just cut strips and then little squares. And then I put the squares in a different place than they were on the strips before. This one is glitter paper behind a thin cut. That's one of my favorite thin cuts. Look at how pretty that is. 
This one I took and because there was like this large space that I just was like flying off into the sky, I thought that'd be perfect for some butterflies. I stamped them directly onto the card and then a sentiment and three sparkles. It can't get easier than that. Here is the sunburst um, thin cut that we have and I just uh, uh, cut up one of the cards uh, backgrounds and put it over another card background. This one again I sliced long strips, cut off squares and kind of moved the squares to different spots and then I used one of our thin cuts with our uh, um, metallic type of black paper that we have there and then I layered it in a chroma, uh, uh, monochromatic way on top of itself. Stamped a couple of the butterflies directly on and then popped this one up. Did a shaker card. Again, just cut the strips and put them on metallic paper this time. If you can see that. And that looks really pretty with that blue. Um, if you uh, make a background that's a little bit darker, that will look really good with a white embossing powder. So I put the white embossing powder on that after using a Versamark ink pad and heated it up and it melted and made that really cool contrast there. Here's another shaker card that I use by just cutting up strips of the background. There's so many things you can do. Just treat it like pattern paper. This is an older one that I did about a year and a half ago, I believe, but one of my favorites. Again, the white embossing powder here and some magic mesh there. I colored in the uh, stars, did a little tearing there. This one, again, a dark background, so that white really pops out on the embossing powder. This one I love because it, um, I stamped the girl right on the uh, distressed background like that and then just colored in certain parts of her and then popped up the little sentiment there. This is a real old one that I used where I just did, um, took the distressed background, the uh, mixed media background, and put up strips and then put a nice die cut there. Here I've taken the uh, distressed background, mixed media, whatever you want to call it, and cut out a few hearts and then cut strips from another distressed background. Put that on there. This was the insides of the sunburst thin cut and you can use both parts and so here I use uh, another part on um, the silver holographic paper. This one I really like a lot. Cut up one of the backgrounds and um, did not only uh, stamped on it directly but then I took and I hope you can see liquid glass and put that on all the letters there and then use some of our, our black plastic cutouts embellishments. Here is another one where I just made strips and then simple sentiment. Uh, took my shimmer brush and sprinkled on it a little bit to make, make it not such a stark background and then a little die cut. Here I took the background and cut out hearts, did dry embossing lines behind it, stamped and beautiful, one of my favorites. This one I did the thin cut that cuts out little squares and then I took the squares and popped them up in different spots than I, where I cut them out at and then put this whole thin cut uh, sentiment on it. That's holographic paper behind it. This is one of my favorite ones from uh, over a year ago. Again, took the strips, cut a square at the end and then just kind of put the squares on the opposite ends. Then I did this, um, I cut this same sentiment out many, many times and um, stacked them up and then embossed it. This one was done by a friend of mine where she took and did her background and stamped on it and then cut it out. And the last one with our um, thin cut with the flowers. This has three parts to it, so I just used a couple of the parts on it and did cut out the thin cut to uh, do the distressed background there. I just did cut it all up, made, made some room for a sentiment there. So there you go, um, all done. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I will also put a list of where you can buy these products. Thanks everybody.